Hello, hello there and welcome to Napalm's newest news and today we have both a dev block with a pre-order and a severe buying warning which is not just to this tank but we'll talk about this in just a moment so give me a few minutes time to uh, talk us through this dev block and when i say us my friend exe is here which will provide us with some very interesting information about what is going on and what to expect in the future and this is directly connected to the ongoing discount sales so this will be a very interesting video which is literally worth your time so t72 av turms i think you pronounce it and this is the syrian guard and you will find the link in the video description down below as usual and this is in the soviet tech tree apparently it's a modernized version it has some excellent fire control systems with um, the best class thermal imaging and very good optics overall as it is stated here in the dev block and it is also from 2006 at least the turms kits and well it costs you a hefty 60 dollars and uh, if the tank is good or not it is more about the rank that it is because this is a premium rank tank of rank six and it kind of is then the um, replacement for the t55 am as the top battle rating top tier um, or not quite top tier but you know um, top premium tier um, premium tank so you know it has the very uh, special soviet look um, a lot of high tier tanks are like this if you enjoy them then you can buy this you will earn extra civil lines and extra rp in particular but well i think it's now time to uh, give the word to exe hello there well hey napalm um what we what can we expect from this t72 um i would say this t72 was one of the export t72 so it probably is based on a T-72 M1, um, which weren't particularly good. So don't expect very good top tier ammo like you can find on the latest T-72 or the T-80U. Um, it will have best in class thermal imaging though, because this um, uh, actually Italian made optic system is very good so um it, it will actually be useful um you will probably have to go for side shots though or aim for weak points on enemy tanks since i don't if i recall correctly there was no good ammo boarded for that thing um yeah I, that's my two cents that tank okay so the tank itself Mm, it depends on wherever you stand when it comes to the premiums if you prefer the overall versatile ammunition of the t55 am and you like its i guess lower battle rating or if you then want to really get straight into the top tier um soviet tanks when it comes to mobility and kind of protection and kind of firepower because you know um, a lot of the, the tanks um, t64 t72s t80s and the upcoming t90 they have overall the same shape the same trend in terms of firepower and also weak spots but that is just part one of this um, informational video the second one is about the um, and we come back to the um, trailer you know um new power from war thunder where we saw a tank that was very likely a t90a and the leopard 2a6 which are even more modern tanks and that brings us to a big problem and we discussed this a few days rank 8 question mark rank 7 premiums question mark what is your few cents on that topic so I heard from multiple sources that reliably leaked me stuff back in the day already, and I therefore leaked on the forums and whatever, that um, basically this new power uh, update will be the foundation to basically go all overboard. So they they literally go batshit crazy 
after this update. So we will ex uh, we will uh, expect like F15s, F16s, uh, F14 Tomcats, and whatever to arrive within the next year. So not this update. This will probably be the last update for for 20, 2020, if I recall correctly. There may be a small one around Christmas though, but the main one of the main updates next year will feature those very advanced aviations uh, and and ground force. Um, so we are basically going full speed ahead towards the end of stuff you could actually introduce to the game without either breaking it or technologically speaking. Um, that means right now we have discounts running. Um, be careful what you buy, because if they introduce another rank, from what I know, when they introduce stuff like a MiG-29 or so, there will be a new aircraft rank. So if you buy now a premium jet and you think uh, you can grind top tier with that, it might very well not be the case. Um, you will probably see current rank premiums pop up as soon as the next uh, update hits, and um, they probably will cost even more of a dime than right now. So right now the T-72 costs, uh, what, 60 euros? Uh, probably the next one, the next tier will, will cost uh, 70, 60, yeah, 70, 65, something like that. So um, I would be very careful on what you spend your money right now. If you like a tank, for example, visuals or uh, historically speaking, buy it. But if you want to buy a quicker researcher or whatever, be careful. It might be soon obsolete. Okay, so um, I'm just now in the game in the tech tree. And what we can see is that there is a T55AM as rank 6 premiums. So if you already have this and it has served you well, there is no real need to invest uh, into the this new premium tank. And, um, you know, when we then see the T90, uh, rank 7 might get filled up with uh, new stuff, but also an additional rank comes and then we will see rank 7 premiums. Now, the huge problem uh, is when we look at the, let's say, Object 120 as a rank 5 premium, um, you can research everything with it, as I recently stated in one of the videos um, regarding talismans or premiums, that if you can, that you can research everything and the rank including of that premium tank plus one without RP penalty. And if you then go two ranks higher, you have a severe RP penalty. I think it's is it 60% less RP that you gain? Something in the region of that. When I stopped playing two years ago, uh, I recently literally came back to the game, but it was like 70% or something like that back in the day. It was very hefty. Yeah, so that, that was cruel. You can, you can research basically plus one of, of that um, rank pretty reliably without penalty. As soon as you go plus two, for example, rank five premium researching rank seven, you may be better served just playing a rank uh, six uh, tech tree tank and you probably get more research points than that. So um, the, the best investment currently would be when it comes to RP to put the talisman on rank seven tanks, which um, are, you know, with around 1,400 golden eagles on discount, um, you know, they, they, cost quite a lot and you don't get um, extra silver lines, uh, but you then can research the next rank without uh, penalty, so to speak. It helps you in stock running, etc. And it's significantly cheaper, uh, even less than a third of the uh, premium package price. So this is a severe buying guide for any rank six premium um, that I currently can speak up. The same probably will happen with uh, aircraft where we currently have uh, rank five premium jets. And again, the best uh, course of action, if you want to invest into the long run, so to speak, would be putting a talisman on rank six planes, if you have them, of course, and then, uh, and which you are good in or which you enjoy. But War Thunder just gets faster and faster into this, into this uh, top tier race, adding top tier stuff all the time. And so a plane, a ship, 
or a, a helicopter or tank even that is good right now can become absolutely obsolete in the near future. And so to then literally invest into a what I would call a dead rank when it comes to premiums is not really helpful. Um, you know, we had this in the past already. If you go to the to the Americans, you know, there were the top rank four premiums back in the days the tiger 2 sla 16 uh, the is2 revenge for the hero brother and also the t29 just to give a short summary of this and uh, they were once the best and the highest rank premiums then we had the rank five premiums then the rank six premiums so there is no guarantee that gaijin stops here it's very likely that Gaijin will add rank 8 for tanks, rank 6 for um, jets, uh, no, rank 7 for jets, and for ships, we also then uh, go up a rank with the already announced dreadnoughts. So this is a really big deal, and you can now save money on multiple ways. The best way is to buy nothing at all. War Thunder is a fantastic game, but when it comes to the business practices of Gaijins, you have to be really careful. And, you know, we have seen premiums that were introduced were amazing right at the start and then got nerfed into the ground or, you know, new secret documents were found and they were readjusted, raised in battle rating um, for the Italian uh, M60, DC Ariete, the stabilizer was removed, etc, etc. So what would be your recommendation right now when it comes to uh, investing into War Thunder um, and, you know, people are really liking the game, but they don't want to get screwed over? Um... First of all, 90% of what you said is probably correct and will happen at some point. Um, tr you, you guys can go wild on buying helicopter premium like the KA-50 and ruin poor tankers' miserable experiences and lives. Um, because I highly doubt that there will be another tier in helicopter. Um, if we look, for example, at the German helicopter tech tree, we end with the Tiger um, scout and attack helicopter from the German Bundeswehr. And we don't have anything more advanced than that in service right now. So um, just on, and the Americans, I mean, you could add um, prototype helicopters a, a, at some point as well, but um, the Longbow is currently the advanced helicopter, right? So I highly doubt that we will see any more helicopters or any more helicopter rank anytime soon. Uh, but for planes and ships and uh, tanks, um, what you said is uh, correct. What would I say about saving? Um, I would say if you currently already own a rank 6 premium, uh, no matter how tempting it would be to get another one, don't buy it. If you have a T55 AM one, keep it. It will serve you well for grinding uh, top tier. Uh, what What is top tier right now? Tanks, it is rank uh, 7. Rank seven. Uh, it should s serve you well if you have uh, the XM1. I mean, there's probably nothing better than an XM1 uh, as a premium tank, in my opinion. Um, for grinding the US, uh, for Germany, what what does Germany have? I I'm so out of the game. I the mean, L44, A1, A1. The L44. The L44. Back in the day when I played it, it was good. I don't know how it is days. It still um, is good, but here is one thing um, that is one of the ever-changing things. When I played the Leopard A1A1 L44, it was completely overshadowed by the spam and rush of the XM1. And while yeah. uh, while performance-wise they haven't changed, the XM1 spam has died down. Now, now the Leopard A1A1 is kind of the dominant uh, uh, premium tank in the eyes of many people, although it's uh, overall its overall effectiveness stat wise is very similar to a lot of the other premiums of other nations think about the OF40 and uh, you know the Super MX30 and I think one of the best premiums is the CV90 105 TML and when we think about Sweden 
I don't know when Sweden will get another uh, rank, if they get any, because the top tank for mm -hmm. Sweden is the STRV-122. So, you know, it might not be There's the same more. for every, there is not, it's not the same for every nation, but go ahead. There's one more STRV-122 that they could add, I think that's the C. Uh, but it, it basically plays the same. Um, Tank-wise, if Sweden gets an upgrade, I don't know. Um, we, we are currently uh, adding 2A, 2A7Vs to the Bundeswehr and already working on the 2A8 in the background. So I think stuff like that will become uh, rank 8. But going back to, to um, what should, what, how do you save money or whatever, uh, we were at Britain. Um, if you have a shot Kaldalek or a um, Roycat, I, I would keep those. Um, but again, I wouldn't buy anything in a rank that you already have a premium. If you have a rank 6 premium tank, uh, you're good. Mm -hmm. If you have a rank uh, 5 uh, premium jet, I think you. Yeah. Um, that that's basically um, I just and to be honest, um, if you played, for example, um, let, let's say you played the event and got yourself the F11 F1 Tiger, throw a talisman on it. It's a, it's a decent dogfighter. It has four air-to-air -air missiles. Um, it sits at it's at nine zero, so it, it will ninety percent of the time uh, face uh, sabers and. Mig 15s, so it is a good jet. It has an afterburner. Um, maybe sometimes just putting a talisman on a event vehicle serves you already enough if you just want to research. Yeah. If you want to make money, I don't think that top tier vehicles will ever reliably produce you good, decent chunks of money. I think rank four uh, premium airplane uh, aircrafts are the way to go there. Yeah, the the old uh, props, the old guard still is very good at civil line farming. Uh, when it comes to the civil lines, that's obviously another thing because there is no civil line penalty on the rank. What really decides the civil lines is the modifiers. And when it comes for tanks in realistic battle, it's 1.4 times 2.0. When it comes to planes, I think it's uh, the best is 2.7. Uh, times uh, 2.0, right? Something, um, currently it's 2.6. Yeah, but the highest that I saw was 2.7 times 2.0 and for ships it's also 1.4 times 2.0. So those are the highest civil line modifiers and you get them at uh, lower rank where the gameplay is more I saw, I, I say more reliable. There will be no huge changes in the future, which is in many aspects a good thing if it is not in the actual focus of Gaijin development um, because you're never safe from surprises. Um, I give you also another example. If you think about, and, and you can recall that, when the first Abrams came out, the M1 Abrams, we did a lot of test shooting, right? And it was so yep. specific. We did it for like, I don't know, nearly an hour or something like this. And mm -hmm. we, we made statistics. I made a video about it um, when getting shot by some Soviet tank. I can't recall what kind of tank we shot at it, but it was at that time the top uh, rank, top battle rating um, counterpart from the Soviets. And you know, it was so distinct where you shoot, uh, at what uh, distance, at what angle, uh, and we made distinguishing between the turret cheeks, etc. And now mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really matter because you punch clean through it anyway with the tanks that you can meet in battle. So what was formerly the best tank uh, was more or less, I wouldn't say completely obsolete, but uh, significantly less powerful, just a few updates down the line. And this, this, this really frantic implementation and constant power creep and feature creep that Gaijin does, that is what makes them the big money. Yes, that keeps War Thunder servers running, but you are not just in the grind for researching and buying vehicles that you want to have fun in, but you get grinded by this power creep if you play at the very top ranks. What do you I say? I would say, um, first of all, Anguishad was 
T64B, if I recall correctly, since DA was the counterpart to the M uh, MPT70 that yeah. was introduced back in the day. Yeah, yeah, the, I think. Uh, I, I think I think you're you're completely right. Statement there. I, I mean, there's not, not really much to argue about that one. I'm on basically on your on your statement. Full. I'm standing behind it. Yeah, which is sad in its own way, right? So um... yeah, me agreeing to you is it, it's really sad. What has this world come to? <laughs> the world of War Thunder. Never ending pain. No, but uh, honestly, this is um, the most honest video I can make as a content creator. Um, I doubt that Gaijin will uh, cut off my head for it. Um, doubt it. Well. But, but this will spit into their money earning. On the other hand, you know, I'm not the biggest content creator. Um, I mean, I'll inform some of my other YouTube friends um, about this, you know, other content creators. And so, like, I was really hyped for this sale and I recommend many things that are great sales, but don't think that you invest now in buying a few rank 6 premium tank bundles, you know, even if they get uh, half priced on October the 3rd, I think, and think that then you're done, you know, for a year or so, because the very next update, maybe even this update right here might be the one. Uh, that completely makes this obsolete. Um, if you just buy yourself um, this tank because you really like it and it's modern and you have nothing in the Soviet tech tree and you don't even think about researching rank 8, then the tank is kind of fine. But whatever comes next uh, makes maybe the experience in this tank not that great. So there is the tank itself. Uh, with its hefty 60 euro price, which we will not see as a 50% discount on October uh, on November the 3rd because it is, you know, from the next update. Um, and also never pre-order. Wait for the dev server, wait for the patch to release, wait for YouTube videos. Maybe it's bugged, maybe it's, you know, overperforming and gets nerfed later on again, or let's call it readjusted. So um, I don't want to send out here negative wipes, but you know, it would be careless to not talk about this at this stage because I made a lot of recommendation videos. I made a lot of um, warning videos and I think this is an absolutely mandatory information for you guys out there. So share it with your friends, share it with your clan mates and just um, think about it logically. What have you already seen in War Thunder if you are with the game for a year or two years? Um, when, was, uh, when was there a negative experience? Uh, look at the old forum entries, look at old YouTube videos when a new vehicle came out. Not just from me, but from other content creators as well. And you will see that there is a certain pattern. I'm playing this game for over seven and a half years. Exa here, Same. yeah, we are true veterans of this game and it's a really fantastic game and there is just nothing like it out there it is a one-off game i would say and there is so much stuff that you can that you can do that you can play you can certainly have fun um, you have various different nations game modes tanks planes, ships helicopters so i don't damn the game here but when dealing with gaijin you have to be really careful because you give them the little finger, they bite off the entire hand, and then ask for yeah. the leg. <laughs> and we have we have seen we have seen this behavior over our seven and a half years of playtime this game. So often they have put in premium out the one patch and the other patch they introduce a new rank, and basically you spend sixty bucks and uh, ma made your whole investment up. They pulled that stunt more than once. Yeah, more than twice. So, um, be careful. If I would sum up my statements overall, um, in addition to Napalm's uh, advice here, don't pre-order. Wait for a dev server, so you have first hands-on with the vehicle. Uh, second of all, don't buy it if you already have a um, matching rank premium tank. 
only buy it if you don't have one or if you're so enthusiastic about said vehicle that you can't live without it but again it is what from what i've heard and from what i've seen in terms of workflow charts and whatever this game will go zero to batch it insane within a half a year from now on and what you invest right now may be very well uh, in the near future so really really be careful what you buy and um yeah that would be the end of my uh commentary on this topic okay uh, thank you very much for your expertise on that um so you heard now two warning voices um ask yourself one question are you willing to take that risk are you willing to gamble with the money that you kind of invest and uh, what do you what do you want in the game and what do you have fun playing um we brought you now several things to think about yourself um, I'm always for, you know, opening your mind yourself for uh, different opinions, points of views. And then you have to just simply ask yourself what you want. And yeah, be very careful with this tank. How exactly this tank will perform, we'll have to see. But again, we have seen this in the past too often. And recently, um, it, like the warnings are right there. The warning flags um, with the teaser themselves you know it's not just hype it's also a little bit of information and you have to read between the lines you have to just look at the past development how it will continue so that's it for uh, us today so thanks for watching thanks for listening you'll find the link to this dev blog as usual in the video description down below and we'll see each other on the waves in the skies and on the battlefields of war thunder